I recently read On Writing Well by William Zinzer. Everybody writes, whether it be text messages, emails, or cover letters. But few people care to write well. Jason Fried, CEO of the software company Basecamp, only hires engineers who can write well because clear writing is a sign of clear thinking. The secret to writing well is making your writing more selective, confident, refined, and tantalizing. By the end of this video, you'll know how to inject those four qualities into your writing and be a better writer. First, selective. You may have several big ideas knocking at your door, wanting to be included in your writing, but you must invite only one inside and leave the rest out in the rain. Zinsser says, every successful piece of nonfiction should leave the reader with one provocative thought that he or she didn't have before. Not two thoughts or five, just one. If someone reads your email or article or chapter, what one idea or actionable takeaway do you want to linger in their mind a week after reading it? The purpose of your writing is to achieve that goal. Quality number two, confident. You will produce your best writing in a relaxed and confident state. The same state you experience after a few alcoholic drinks at a social event, when you're not afraid to be yourself and say what you think. But no need to rely on alcohol when writing. You can enter a relaxed and confident state at your keyboard by writing for just one reader, yourself. When you write for yourself, you stop worrying about what a teacher, boss, editor, or audience might think and explain a concept how you would like it explained to you or make an argument in the way that you find convincing. The first few paragraphs you write for yourself will feel a little awkward, but by paragraph four, you'll settle in and start writing with relaxed confidence. After freely explaining the one point you wanna to make to yourself, you've completed your first draft. Congrats. Now it's time to go back over your first draft like a surgeon and cut out non-vital paragraphs and sentences. Read your work out loud, and if you're not 100% certain a paragraph or sentence is needed, remove it and see if your piece of writing can survive without it. Zinter says, removing is the quickest cure and often the best. Most first drafts can be cut by 50% without losing any information or losing the author's voice. I like to print out my first draft and put a check mark by every sentence I can't live without. When I'm writing on my phone, I put an asterisk in the front of paragraphs and sentences I deem vital. The unchecked and non asterisk items will go on the chopping block when I go to rewrite my first draft. You might be thinking, rewrite? I don't have time for that. Well, Zinster says rewriting is the essence of writing. Professional writers rewrite their sentences over and over and then rewrite what they have rewritten. Rewriting makes writing tighter, stronger, and more precise. Before rewriting your first draft, scan the checked and asterisk sections for qualifiers that make your voice sound timid. Zinter says, don't say you were a bit confused and sort of tired and a little depressed and somewhat annoyed. Be confused, be tired, be depressed, be annoyed. Don't hedge your prose with little timidities. Good writing is lean and confident. Qualifiers are words that lawyers and politicians use to hedge their points and avoid getting in trouble. But in an attempt to write safely, the writing is unreadable. Here's an overly qualified sentence written by a four-term politician in the book. On balance, affirmative action has, I think, been a qualified success. If he really thought affirmative action was a success, he should own it and just say it. Whatever your stance, take that stance. Points made in a timid manner will be ignored, and your writing will be forgotten. So cross out all qualifiers you find in your first draft and begin writing your second draft. Writing quality number three, refined. When you're done your second draft, it will be much leaner than the first, but not lean enough. Read your second draft like an extremely impatient reader who hates unnecessary words. Your goal is to get your eventual reader to move through your piece as fast as possible by removing redundant words and replacing pretentious words. Start by searching for redundant adverbs. Example, if you wrote, she quietly whispered, circle quietly since there's no other way to whisper. If you wrote, the radio blared loudly, circle blared because blared connotes loudness. Next, search for redundant adjectives that do not help explain nouns. For example, if you wrote steep cliff, circle steep because cliffs are generally steep. If you wrote brown dirt, circle brown because most dirt is brown. Next, Find pretentious words in your writing that you can replace with simple words. For example, don't say implement when you can say do. Don't say sufficient when you can say enough. 
And don't say referred to as when you can say called. And lastly, bracket any wordy sentences that you can condense when you write your next draft. For example, you could condense with the possible exception of to accept. At the end of the refinement stage, you want a sentence like, at the present time we are experiencing precipitation, to read, it is raining. Challenge yourself to shorten half the sentences so that you simply convey your point and come across as a clear thinker who knows what they're talking about. Now for quality number four, tantalizing. Zinsser says, the most important sentence in any article is the first one. If it doesn't induce the reader to proceed to the second sentence, your article is dead. And if the second sentence doesn't induce him to continue to the third sentence, it's equally dead. If you have 30 minutes to write an opinion piece, you should reserve the final 10 minutes to optimize your first paragraph. Brainstorm at least five versions of your opening that could hook the reader. You might start with a surprising fact, like you know more than you think you do, or a funny statement, like I've often wondered what goes into a hot dog. Now I know, and I wish I didn't. Or a story, I'll never forget the day when I... Zinsser started his book with the sentence, One of the pictures hanging in my office in mid-Manhattan is a photograph of writer E.B. White. That sentence gets the reader to imagine an apartment building in New York and wonder, who is E.B. White? The imagery plus the question engages the mind and keeps the reader reading. After generating a list of possible openings, you must ask yourself, what opening is most likely to hook my reader? In the end, good writing is a sign of clear thinking. If you work to make your writing selective, confident, refined, and tantalizing, readers will get the sense that you're a clear thinker and will take the time to read what you think and may even be persuaded by your words. That was the core message that I gathered from On Writing Well by William Zinser. It's no wonder this has been a best-selling book for over three decades. I highly recommend it. If you would like a one-page PDF summary of insights that I gathered from this book, just click the link below and I'd be happy to email it to you. If you already subscribed to the free Productivity Game email newsletter, this PDF is sitting in your inbox. If you like this video, please share it. And as always, thanks for watching and have yourself a productive week.